Shields up, Ironbreakers. We're on here coming at you with another live stream slash video. Sorry about the uh, technical difficulty difficulties we're experiencing today due to weather conditions, but nonetheless, I shall continue until I get my point across. Now, as I was uh, saying earlier, because this is the third take that we're doing for this, today I'd like to talk about the joy of discovery and exploration and video games. And some of you guys might be wondering why exactly am I bringing this particular subject up? And the reason is I recently did a video on um, Elite Dangerous where I told you guys about a lot of the stuff that I really liked about the game. And I noticed that um, I forgot to men mention one specific thing that I also found to be particularly important for my personal experience with Elite Dangerous. And that is the possibility of potentially being one of the players that eventually discovers something for the very first time ever. And this is a very interesting subject and I figured it's actually a good topic that I can dedicate a whole video to. And the reasoning behind this is because if we really think about it, nowadays, it's, it's like unless you're someone who is just like specifically dedicated to this one thing. Also, I'm looking behind me because there's like a golf course behind me and they're actually playing golf back there and I'm scared I'm gonna just like suddenly hear four and boom, cracked head. But anyways, as I was saying, um, this is a, a subject that I found particularly interesting because unless you're someone who is specifically dedicated to this one specific game and you get it as soon as it's humanly possible and you start playing it, like super fast and instantly start trying to figure out everything you can about this game it's going to be very hard for the average player to actually get like a world first discovery so to speak on a video game nowadays it's 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 something that just doesn't happen anymore um in big part due to the influence of the internet as well because nowadays games come out and there's already like a guide there's already like forums where people have already debunked all of the game, whether it be because the game has already been released in Japan or because it has a prima guide before the game even comes out. Like an example that I like to bring up uh, when I'm talking about this stuff is my very first ever Dark Souls 2 playthrough. Because if you guys remember, and yes, hashtag four ring slots, all of those jokes, you guys can put all those in the comments. I still remember that shit. But beyond that, something that was very disappointing for me is like, if you look at that particular playthrough, obviously I played through it blind because that, to me, that is the only way to experience a Souls game. That is the only way to experience pretty much every game, um, unless it's just unplayable any other way. But um, it's like experiencing a video game blind, for starters, it's something that a lot of the people in the current generation, they don't do. They want to know all of the best stuff that is in a video games and uh, just about like all of the, where all of the best weapons are and what are all the strategies for killing all the bosses. This is something that a lot of people do before they actually try to figure it out for themselves, which I, I think it's kind of weird uh, because it kind of robs you of a lot of the fun in a video game. But ultimately in that particular playthrough of Dark Souls 2, what ended up happening is uh, I had early access to the game. So I started playing the game before most people did. Uh, I posted the footage, I think it was day of release or one day before release, something like that. Uh, I posted the footage of, the, of my playthrough and instantly I, I, look, I was looking at comments and people were already correcting me like saying, oh, you should have gone here instead of going there. And I'm thinking to myself, how the fuck are these people like they're not even playing the game yet? How can they possibly know all of these things? And then I reminded myself that if I'm not mistaken, the Prima Guide for Dark Souls 2 was actually released ahead of the game itself. So a lot of people had already seen the guide before the game even come out. And that was something that really struck me as something that, that it just really disappointed me that so many people went through the trouble of reading the guide ahead of, ahead of actually playing the game. And it made me realize that nowadays the internet does spoil a lot of stuff for you to the point where ahead of a game coming out, if you're someone who wants to experience everything completely blind and for the first time, you basically have to do a media blackout of what is happening around that game because even professional gaming websites, they don't respect this kind of stuff. Like usually if you see a video on YouTube that's like, oh, let's play, whatever, you already know, you already know what you're getting into, right? 
Uh, but like when you get into a web, when you get into a website and they like spoil stuff like straight ahead in the title, which has happened, for instance, for Zelda Breath of the Wild, because like you know I have um, I have this uh, app on my phone where I get uh, a lot of um, I get a lot of like taglines and a bit of uh, text blurbs from multiple news websites to see if there's any particular news that I'm interested in. And I, at, ahead of release of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I could barely look at that app because like every other uh, title for an article, like the article titles themselves were spoilers to Zelda. And that was so frustrating. They were saying like 10 things you should do before you start playing Zelda. Uh, or maybe you should definitely go to this shrine in this area because it's very important. There's a special item there. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, can we stop with these fucking spoilers just like spawning all over the damn place? I mean, I'm even careful nowadays whenever I'm, I'm playing a game and I'm releasing st footage day of, I'm even careful about what I put on the thumbnails because that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of thing that I'm used to from, um, from you guys basically telling them, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't really see anything right now. Like I need, I need a little bit of brightness here, thank you, just to make sure that the stream is going all right. Anyway, as I was saying, because that's the kind of stuff that I expect you guys not to want to get spoiled by, so I won't put spoilers in the titles, I won't put spoil spoilers in the thumbnails, I'll avoid that stuff like the play. But like other websites and just like stuff in general, like sometimes people even with certain YouTube titles and whatnot, they just spoil everything on the fucking title, which is not even something you can avoid reading at this point, right? You can't, you can't even avoid it. It's just like, if it happens to spawn on your face, it just shows up on your face and boom, you're spoiled. And that is, again, what makes me wonder, like, will we ever get to a point where people will be discovering stuff without resorting to the internet or guides or any of this stuff that we're bombarded with ahead of the release of a video game, you know? Like, are people actually ever going to go back to the way things were in the olden days? And I realize that, you know, things change and the internet is actually mostly positive for just about everything. But there are some things that the internet and the current generation of gaming is taking away from us. And that is something, and I'm sorry, my, I think my hand was in front of the camera there. And that is something that I have kind of found again when it comes to uh, Elite Dangerous. Because in Elite Dangerous, it's almost impossible for players to actually explore every single planet, every single star system, because there's just so many of them, you know? and Therefore, there's always the potential that the developers can hide something in one of those places and eventually you could be the first one to discover it. And there's so much excitement in the possibility of you being the very first person to actually witness something, you know? The very first person to actually see something happen. Like, can you just imagine uh, the feeling that must have gone through the player's head who was the, the player who suffered the first high prediction? Which I know that some of you guys, you know, you guys are watching this video, you guys are like, what the fuck's a high prediction? High prediction is being pulled out of hyperspace by an advanced alien race that you know nothing about. Just to give you guys an idea, which is something very cool that can happen in Elite Dangerous. And it's like, can you imagine what must have gone through the head of the first player to be high predicted? You know, first of all, he was probably scared because he didn't know if, if the aliens were going to blow up his ship and that was going to incur some kind of cost. But ultimately, it must have been such a thrill to actually see something like, oh my god, fucking aliens all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the kind of joy of discovery that I think we're missing in video games nowadays, in a lot of them. Um, even, I, I was told recently when I was talking about this specific topic that um, in Dark Souls 1, I believe that the Great Hollow supposedly took uh, a couple of months to be discovered, like that must have been amazing. Can you, imagine, can you imagine being the first player, assuming that there were no guides telling people about this, but can you imagine being the first player to actually um, see the Great Hollow? You're like, oh my God, this thing has been here all this time and nobody knew about it. And that is, you know, that's the kind of discovery that I'm talking about when I'm talking about this video, being the first one because I mean, there's also the joy of exploration, just like exploring a video game. Exploring a video game, like I told you guys, uh, that is something that I really enjoyed in Xenoblade Chronicles. 
Xenoblade Chronicles X. Uh, that was just like one of the one of the games where I've had the biggest joy of just actual exploration, exploring the world and how colorful it was and how different it was and all the different areas. That is a little bit of a different topic altogether, but also extremely important because not a lot of video games also pay attention to that as well. Because we are increasingly getting video games that are a lot more linear and don't give players as much freedom to just explore stuff as we would like. Although at the same time, we're also getting quite a few good open world experiences, which is, you know, it's always good. Uh, there's a lot of experiences that allow you to explore as well, very nice. Like an example that I would bring to this, where there's a lot of exploration to be done, is No Man's Sky. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna call me out on it, say, No Man's Sky was bad and this and all this and that and the other. I was never in the, I was never one of those uh, people that just straight up uh, said No Man's Sky sucks. I never said that personally. I always said that I kind of enjoyed my time with it. I understand why some people didn't. There is a problem with No Man's Sky though that I've realized recently having played Elite Dangerous, which is um, I, I, a friend of mine has been playing No Man's Sky and he keeps trying to pull me back into No Man's Sky and I'm just like, okay, so suppose I go back into No Man's Sky. Well, first I have stuff trapped all together and it's like, oh my God, how complex can you get? You know, how complex can you get with that stuff? Ooh, video output low. I'm gonna try to move hopefully to a location that'll fix this. Come on, YouTube, you can do it. Um, but ultimately, yeah, today's, today's weather conditions are not that great, so I'm probably gonna have to wrap up the stuff here pretty soon. The, the stream is probably getting pretty choppy. But as I was saying, you know, it's like, if you look at Elite Dangerous, it's much more of a simulation-oriented game than No Man's Sky, right? Let me actually just pause and restart this. Maybe it'll fix it. Stream's been resumed. Let's see if that fixes it. But as I was saying, you know, Elite Dangerous is a video game that is a lot more about um, simulation than necessarily um, than No Man's Sky, and yet No Man's Sky manages to be more complex and put a lot more barriers to the exploration than Elite Dangerous. Do you guys think that's a bit of a problem? You know, I think that's a bit of a problem. Looks like our output is good again. I'd like to, can we get this thing out of the way or are we just gonna like? <laughs> God damn it, YouTube Gaming, what is wrong with you? Make this bar go away, I get it. The stream is good now, thank you. <laughs> But yeah, you guys, the joy of discovery is the joy of being the very first one to discover something. Like, imagine what it must have been like also to the people playing World of Warcraft if you were the first one ever to encounter Ragnaros, right? That is something that I used to, like, always think about how great it was, specifically because it was something that not everybody could do. You know, the fact that there's bits of content in a video game that not everyone can reach, that is not necessarily a bad thing all the time. That gives players something to look forward to, something to strive towards, you know? Whereas if everything is handed to you on a silver platter, then everything just gets a little bit too easy. And, you know, and I understand a developer's kind of curse, so to speak, where it's like, oh, dude, we've created all this content. We want to make sure that all of our players get to... Uh, witness it, but the mystery, you know, of there being something that only a specific subset of people actually get to witness is very special in its own right, and it is something that should not be forgotten, and it is one of the things that keeps me really motivated to jump back and forth on the motherfucking play of these system in Elite Dangerous, hoping I get goddamn interdicted, hyperdicted by Thargoids. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good stuff. Now, uh, that was uh, the topic that I had for today. This is all I really had to talk with you guys about. Obviously, as you can see, I'm still on vacation. I have uh, another stream that I have planned that I would like to do tomorrow, but I'm not exactly sure what the topic is going to be on that specific uh, stream. So if you guys have any suggestions, leave them as comments to this because I can't really read chat right now because of the lighting. It's completely blocking the screen. I can't see a damn thing that's happening on screen right now, which is why every time something from YouTube pops up, I'm like, Ugh! but um, 
If there is something that you guys would like to suggest, wait until this processes, leave it as a comment. I will be checking through the comments of this and let me know your opinions on all the stuff that we've talked about today. Hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. Sorry for the technical issues. So you guys, I'm not sure if you guys can hear the wind because this microphone is actually really good at blocking out that kind of stuff, but it is really windy in here today. And that is why um, the cell phone coverage is not the best. Once again, I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys while we're looking at the beautiful beach in the background where I'm not sure if I'm gonna go there today because I've actually gotten a little bit burnt on my scalp from the sun because even though I have hair, it turns out it's not enough to completely block out the sun and I think I got burnt a little bit in my head and it hurts, it hurts a lot. And also after banging my head against that tree the other day, get, beginning to get some serious head injuries over here. Anyways, I'm gonna go back um, to our, um, to our room here and uh, I'm actually I've actually been playing Xenoblade Chronicles 1 chilling out a little bit in between uh, spending time with the family so I'm gonna go back there do that hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream and I will see you guys in the next one bye bye I mean if I can actually stop streaming huh <laughs>